Well, this morning, the liberals have all gone back to their fallback position. You know, not all of these people are bad people. The majority of them are really nice. Nobody has ever said anything but that. On the other hand, if only one of every ten is a bad dude, then we've got some serious problems all over this world. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the series of terrorist attacks that took place across uh, across Western Asia and Europe yesterday. Uh, the beginning one, and let me ask you a quick question. When you heard that the Russian ambassador had been shot and killed in Turkey yesterday, did you think, hmm, well, I'm going to have a deliberative moment so that we may consider just who may be responsible? Or was your first thought Muslim? And then when you heard that some deviant drove a large truck through a crowd at a, at a Christmas market in Germany, did you sit there and say, hmm, Jay Willikers, I wonder if somebody had a stroke at the wheel or perhaps was having difficulty driving or was demonstrating against the high price of petrol? Or did you think Muslim? And then when you heard there was an attack in Switzerland yesterday, did you think somebody had a spat with a boyfriend or girlfriend or did you think Muslim? I mean, be honest with yourself. We're not asking you to sit here and indict yourself, but be honest with yourself. What was the first thought that went through your head on each and every one of those stories? It's 27 right now. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And then people say that the liberals still running around in denial about Donald Trump's election. Well, Donald Trump got elected because he speaks bluntly about these things while everybody else walks around as if they're barefooted on broken glass. And there's going to be a lot of broken glass. Not long after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, 15 years ago, I happened to be speaking with a friend of mine that I grew up with. His name is Steve Smith. Steve lives in Seattle, Washington now. Still haven't been out to see him since I've been here. Probably the smartest person I knew growing up. Among my friends, he was just the guy who seemed to always have his nose in a book and just had a huge curiosity about everything from technical issues to philosophical issues. You name it, he had an interest in it. Ended up joining the Navy after high school, spent eight years in the nuclear Navy, was a huge smashing uh, smashing success there. Uh, could have stayed on and gotten paid a lot of money by the Navy because of all of the things that he happened to know, but he decided instead to leave and go to work for a large computer company based in Seattle. And we were having a conversation within a couple of months after 9-11. And I remember him saying that for a lot of us, as difficult as it was to get through that day, it almost felt like the beginning of the apocalypse. If you recall, what it, I was standing in a newsroom watching all of these things take place on closed-circuit TVs that day, and it was just things you never saw on regular television I got to see, and it was brutal. Let me just explain that. It was absolutely brutal. And yet, it was also at a distance. It was still a TV show. And I remember telling Steve that day, we were having that conversation. I said, you know what? The day, though, that they actually come out and they start attacking the big box stores in places like Ames, Iowa, is when they're really going to sow terror around this world. And so the big attacks, where 3,000 people are killed, Al-Qaeda, that was their MO. ISIS, on the other hand, has a different MO. And I'm getting to something here. I'm going to share with you a clip in just a moment from Dr. Sebastian Gorka, who was appearing on Fox News Channel yesterday with Brett Baer on Special Report, because he said something very interesting that I think follows very closely what I brought up in that conversation a decade and a half back. But for all of the lefties out there who are continually saying, yes, but, you know, these people don't actually work for ISIS, look, we're not that gold dang dumb where we think that people are walking around with an ISIS membership card issued by the new caliphate in Raqqa. Okay, we've got a little bit more on the ball than the left gives us credit for. On the other hand, if you've got millions of people around the world reading this ISIS claptrap online, which you do have, and ISIS is saying, say, uh, even though we never sent you the membership card, if you'd like to get even with those infidels, here's an idea. Kill a truck driver, throw his body in the passenger seat, and then drive his truck through a crowd at a Christmas market. This is, this is what's going on out there, and, and Lefty is still in denial about all of this. Lefty can't bring himself for politically correct reasons. Well, in, in many cases, they hate Christians more in the, in the first place, and likely Christmas too. They can't bring themselves to admit what the rest of the world knows, which is why people like Donald Trump win elections, which is why Angela Merkel is going to go down in flames in her next election, which is why Brexit passed, which is why Italy 
the, 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 the leader there, the president, took a bath a couple of weeks ago in an election. And it's why Marine Le Pen or someone along her lines is going to win the election in France coming up. Because people, regular people, have had enough of being lied to by the elites. Now, this is Sebastian Gorka speaking last night on Fox News. Keep in mind what I said about terrorists attempting to strike smaller targets in smaller places in the heartland of the United States. And the jihadis are already in place. Uh, we saw in Ankara that this is perhaps the gre most uh, grievous example of insider threat. This is a police officer. This isn't somebody who came off a boat yesterday out of Syria. This is somebody who clearly was trained with a weapon, was carrying a weapon. Uh, that is perhaps the most insidious potential threat that we have to face. And over to Berlin, you have a number of articles that talk about this warning yes. ahead of time. November 17th, a Stratfor article says the most recent edition of Islamic State's uh, Ramia a magazine causing an international stir. The feature that's drawn the most attention is an article encouraging the group's followers to conduct more vehicular assaults. Uh, also, Inspire magazine before this, this article noted an advantage of vehicular assaults is that the means of attack are legal, easier to obtain than guns or explosives. To obtain their weapon, those plotting such attacks do not have to take the kind of risks that make them vulnerable to detection and arrest. Furthermore, the vehicles can be borrowed or rented, making an attack relatively inexpensive. Expensive. The Daily Mirror, others had uh, articles warning of Christmas market attacks as well. Uh, yes, don't forget that the San Bernardino attack occurred when? It occurred during a Christmas party at the office where the couple Farouk and Malik worked. So the symbolism is very important here. This is the infidel holiday that they're attacking. Uh, to your previous point, um, ISIS has learned from Al-Qaeda's mistakes. Uh, Al-Qaeda was obsessed with spectacle and with killing as many people as possible. Uh, ironically, 9-11 was perhaps too successful. 3,000 people in 102 minutes. Uh, ISIS said, well, it's not about more people or WND. Let's just do classic guerrilla warfare. Death by a thousand cuts is what it has been called historically. Death by a thousand cuts. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News Radio 1310.com. We've got 27. Look, this is, uh, this is the only opportunity I have to express an opinion this morning uh, on my own because I've got a guest heavy show today. Kelton Hatch will be joining us from Idaho Fish and Game in a few minutes with some details on a big upcoming event tonight. Also, Steve Millington will join us between 8 30 and 9 o'clock this morning. Steve is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. And then in hour number two of the program, our monthly visit with our Twin Falls prosecuting attorney, Grant Loebs, and we'll be talking legal issues in hour number two. Uh, so I just I wanted to make, make it clear in the early moments of this program today that indeed World War III continues out there. Now, the other aspect of all of this, all the whining lefty is doing about the Russians lately, let's be honest, the Russians are in Syria because Barack Obama destabilized Syria as he did Egypt and Libya. He is the man responsible for taking the big stick and smacking it aside, the bee's nest, in all of those places. That's why Russia is there. In the meantime, the Russians have been begging us for years to join them in the fight against Islamic terrorism because they've dealt with it, the, the Moscow theater attack, the Beslan school attack. Uh, they've dealt with Chechen rebels, and they've got Muslim republics all over the southern border of Russia. And all we do is stone cold tell them no. And then we complain about them while we cozy up to Iran, we cozy up to Cuba, and President Obama won't say a peep when the Chinese provoke us with an act of war by stealing one of our naval drones last week. Hello, what part of this are, are we missing? And why don't we get on board? I said in a column I wrote the other day, you can find it at our website, newsradio1310.com, you don't have to praise Vladimir Putin, but you do need him protecting your flank. Because the two biggest threats to world security right now are not Russia and the USA, but are the Islamic new caliphate, if you will, along with China. And things are shaping up right now as they did in the late 1930s, where you have a nasty East Asian power, which is looking to flex its muscle and bully everybody else. And then to the west of them, you have another fascistic power that is also looking to do the same and is spreading across Europe with its tentacles. Now, back then, it was considered in the late 1930s 
unlikely that we would ever ally with Joseph Stalin, but we did, and it brought those totalitarian regimes and the existential threats they posed to the world to an end. I don't think we have to get in a shooting war if we're prepared now and we have another hulking ally like Russia to join us to be the counterbalance in Asia and in Europe to all of these other threats. But for some reason, you've got the American left still angry because they didn't get their way November 8th, and they're trying to, through their own actions, whether inadvertently or intentionally, create the conditions that will lead us into World War III with the wrong people. Now, getting back to this point Gorka made and I made before that about attacks taking place in the middle of the country, in the heartland, this is not something we can walk away from. Now, I do not recommend going out and beating up people because you don't like their looks or what they wear on the tops of their heads. That is wrong. And we've seen some instances of that in this community. Not all that long ago, somebody was sentenced in court and they got a dressing down from the judge for that very reason. But I'm telling you, we have to be vigilant. And we have to, and the new president assures us that this situation of this open door policy, just bringing people here willy nilly because it makes the liberals feel good somewhere down in their tummies, that it's going to be coming to an end. Because this is a threat, cultural threat. It's a threat to our traditional faith. It's a threat to our security. And all of these things are going to be coming to a boil. Yes, it probably isn't true that yesterday that, that these people were all working in concert together, but you had three of these attacks all occurring in a matter of a few hours, all within about a thousand miles of each other. That's about the distance from here, well, I don't know, probably to Ames, Iowa. Think about that for a moment. Think about that. Think about what, what would happen if tomorrow we had attacks in, I don't know, Des Moines, Lincoln, Nebraska, and in Pocatello. It, 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 it's that type of distance that's going on. Now, I'm not saying that those things are likely here tomorrow. I'm just sharing that, and it could be a real possibility. We've got to be forever vigilant. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. We'll be joined in a couple of minutes. Going to spend a, a little bit uh, of our time speaking with Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fish and Game about an event coming up tonight. Uh, he's got all the details. That's on the way. also wanted to tell you about uh, some of our friends in Jerome at Last Stand Survival Shop. They're offering pistol and rifle classes. These are just getting started. Small classes, by the way, so you get a lot of personal attention. They can also get items in that you might necessarily have to wait for somewhere else. They can generally get items in you need very, very quickly, and they have gunsmiths on site. And they will actually build you an, a very good, high-quality custom firearm if that's what you're looking for. And they offer food storage. And that's not only for long-term, but for the 72-hour uh, the big storms we might get if you have an ice storm or something along those lines. And you got to remember, too, that this is a veteran-owned shop, and they offer discounts for law enforcement, military, for the firefighters, paramedics, also for NRA members, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. And if you'd like to know more, you can find Last Stand Survival Shop at Facebook. You can find out all sorts of details about sales and other things they have avail available by just checking that out. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, it's 26. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com.